So now once we understand the different level types, the first thing we have seen, if you remember, we, we try to understand the basic ISS. The first thing we need to understand is addressing part, how to configure the addressing inside the ISS, the NSAP address. And the next thing, understanding the different levels. So because when we are configuring them in multiple areas, we need to ensure that different levels should be correct in order to have a proper exchange of the routes. So now once we understand this, we are ready to start our labs. So where we'll see some basic configuration commands. So if you want to configure ISS on any specific router, the first thing we need to do is we need to configure ISS with this command. So we need to go to config mode and then we need to say router ISS. And in, in most of the new iOS, you have something called process ID. You can even define a process ID similar to OSPF here. So you can have multiple instances of ISS can be running, but it has to be, it can be in a name or number. There is no specific uh, number range here. So you can use any name. So most of the time in, in the recent configurations, you may be using with a process ID name. So here in my labs, I'm not using process ID. Uh, I'm just using a normal router ISS, which is a default process, we can say. But if you want, you can use uh, multiple processes of ISS running on the same router, similar to your OSPF. So once we configure the first command, which is router ISS. So this command is going to enable the protocol. And once you are in the router mode, we need to configure the network net address, network entity title address. If you remember, uh, it should, it must be starting with 47, 49, a five address, which is going to define as a private purpose. And then we need to define the area, whatever the area you want. And then we need to define the system ID, any number, it's up to you. You can use, I just sim make it simple like this. And then finally, we need to tell N selector address, which must be always zero. So this address must be defined inside the router mode with a command called net. So it is going to start with net and then we need to type the address. And once you enable this, your ISS starts working. These are the basic minimum commands we need to add inside the router mode. And once you do this, now to advertise any interface, let's say I got a LAN interface and I want to advertise this interface. There is no network command. Instead of network command, we just need to go to the interface and under the interface, we need to give the command called IP router ISS. If you want to advertise your IPv4 addresses, and if you are, if you are also running IPv6, then we have to say IPv6 router ISS command. So when you enable these two command, depending upon the requirement, if you want to enable V6 also, which will be doing in our labs also. So in this labs, we are going to run IP ISS for both IPv4 as well as IPv6. And then we are doing some uh, troubleshooting on that and some uh, additional configurations as per the requirement. So we are not doing it separately. We are running both IPv4 and IPX at the same time. But still ISS will be only one, which will be used for both IPv4 and IPv6. Unlike your OSPF, if you know OSPF, we have two different versions. We have OSPF V2, which is for IP version 4. And we have OSPF V3, which is for IP version 6. But in case of ISS, the same ISS net address or a common ISS can be used for both IPv4 as well as IPv6. So the neighborship table, database table, everything is common for both. But if you want, you can end in the shortest path algorithm, SPF algorithm also same for both. If you want, we can even change it to separate by using some multi topology options, which come in advanced uh, things. We'll get into those things in the future classes. But as of now, the ISS is something common for both IP version 4 and IP version 6. So these are the minimum configurations which we need to do if you want you to run ISS on your specific routers. So we are ready to start our lab here. So in this lab, I'm going to use some multiple routers here. You can see I got six routers here. So now I'm going to read the task here. The task is to configure ISS for both IP version 4 as well as IP version 6. So I got three set of routers here. Like I got three routers here, three set of routers here. And I got three set of routers. I'm going to configure these three routers in one area and the remaining three routers in a different area. And finally, after that, we are going to exchange the route between the different areas. And then also in the next task, we'll be adding some more, uh, some additional advanced commands, optimization commands, and also we are going to verify them as well. So this will be a major task in our lab here. So first we'll be starting with 
the task here you can see the first task is to ensure that your routers router 1 router 3 router 4 must be configured in the same area and the area id should be 49.0134 it can be any number so i'm going to use router 1 here router 3 and router 4 here you can see so these are the default routers i have so i'm going to use them in single area so first thing uh, we are going to see how to configure the routers in the same area and after that we'll be moving on different areas also and the system id must be configured with some address like area id is this and the system id must be 000, 000 all zeros and finally you have to say x so x represents router number so in order to make sure that it is unique on the router one i'll use one and on the router three i'll use three and on the router four i'll use four System ID must be unique. So I'm going to use all zeros and one as system ID and the n selected address is all zeros. So where X is your router numbers covering router one, three, four. And I'm going to advertise all the loopback interfaces. So my all my interfaces are pre-configured with IP addressing. Like all the addressing in my diagram series, I'm using 10.0.xy.x. Dot dot x dot x. So X represents, suppose this is the link. This is router three, router four, or router three, router one. So it will be like 10 dot 0 dot 13 dot. So if it is router uh, 3, so I'm going to use router 1 to 3 link. I'm going to use it as 10 dot 0 dot 13 dot uh, 3. If it is router 1, I'm going to use 10 dot 0 dot 13 dot 1 like this. And all, all the connected interfaces, I'm using the similar type of addressing. And each and every in, in router interface having one loopback interface. So which is which I'm using for testing. So it is actually pre-configured with addresses like in case of router 1, it is 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. That is a default address with slash 32 subnet mask. And on the router 2, I am using 2.2.2.2. .2 Similarly, on the router 3, I am using 3.3.3.3 .3 like that. These are the loopback addresses which I am using for testing purpose. So this is the default topology which I am using in my labs. So majorly this topology I designed for my uh, CCI service provider classes. This is a service provider core network which is running some six routers with multiple links. So we are connecting router one, router two. So we are going to use a similar topology. It's the same topology which we are using for implementing and testing our ISS also. So first we are going to configure these three routers in one area and the area ID will be 49.0134. Uh, and these three routers, we are going to configure them as 49.0256 area. And then we'll see how to exchange the routes between these areas. So before we start our lab, I want you to have some basic idea on IP addressing as well. As I discussed, the connected interfaces will be using connected interfaces will be using some address starting with 10.0.xy.x with slash 24 subnet mask. All my connected interfaces. And then this is what I'm using. And then all the loopback interfaces are configured with x, 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 nothing but uh, if I'm using router 1, it will be 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. If I'm using router 2, it will be like that. So I'm using loopback 0 interfaces. I don't have any LAN interface. So I just want to test loopback 0 to loopback 0 testing, assuming that it's my LAN interface. So we need to ensure that our loopback to loopback must ping to each other based on that. So anyway, I don't need loopback 1, loopback 2 in this labs, but maybe in advanced service for the classes, we may use this particular specific loopbacks also in the future. And after this, uh, the default IPv6 addressing also similar to that one. Like the default addressing IPv6 will be 2001, all the addressing starting with. And I'm going to use XY. Like if I'm connecting router 1 to router 3, it will be 2001 with 13 colon colon X. So in case of router 1, it will be 1. In case of router 3, it will be 3. So this is the default addressing I'm using for connected interfaces. And for my loopback interfaces, I'm using 2001 colon colon slash x, x. I think I'm using this address you can see with slash value of 128, the default, the slash value for the loopback. So in case of router one, I'm using the loopback zero address is 2001 colon colon one. In case of router two, it is two, three, four, like that it will go on. So these are the default configurations which already I have pre-configured in my, in my topology, which I'm using here. So if you want, you can just refer to these addresses. I documented some addresses here. You can even use these addresses, addressing part. You can refer them for your basic IP addressing and IPv6 addressing configurations. So this part is already done. 
so i'm not getting into basic ip addressing and ipv6 addressing so i'm ready to directly get into our lab where we are going to configure a specific routers in specific area so as per our task here what we discussed just now our task is to configure these three routers router 1 router 3 router 4 in area 49.0.13 using iss for ip version 4 and ip version 6 okay 